guys welcome to my channel or welcome back my name's Debbie if you don't know me and today's video is going to be a little bit of a try on of new makeup for me video a little bit of a first impre first impressions if you will of the melt smoke sessions palette it's not a new palette it's been out for quite some time I think you can still get hold of it I got it maybe probably about a month ago perhaps a little bit longer just not get around to using it on camera and I really want to do that because I want to start using it and I like to use it on camera first before I do that so that's what we're going to do today so I'm going to stick more in the neutrals today and the golds and browns and I will probably will do another look with the greens in another video so that's what we're going to do today just try these out try out the beautiful shimmery golds that are in this palette because they look absolutely stunning so the only thing I would say straight away when looking at this palette is that it only has two mattes so in the brown section you've only got sour diesel which is the really dark brown so might be interesting seeing how I'll blend that out without bringing anything else in but that is what I'm going to try and do so let's see how we go so I'm just going to scooch you in a little bit and we'll get started with a little bit of a neutral eye look from this palette so I'm just going to go in with the shade sour diesel the, the dark brown and I'm going to go in very only to start with because I'm not sure as I say how fallout heavy it is and how easy it's going to be to blend but actually I've only very lightly touched the pan but it doesn't seem too bad I'm not getting too much kick up so that's good because when using colours like this it's always a bit scary when you first try them because you never know quite how crazy they're going to be yeah, it's a lot less powdery of a formula than I was expecting which is helping with the control somewhat because I want to create a sort of little bit of a winged out shape but not too too mad that's very unique it's brown but it's sort of got a mossiness to it somehow it's hard to explain but like it looks brown in the pan but there's definitely still a a green tinge to it as such which I'm all about because I love a green shadow any shades of green really but grungy sort of dark greens and browns are definitely up there as some of my favourite shadows really so I'm doing this on a unset base not painting paint pot but I usually use and I'm taking my time as I say I'm using a small tape of blending E45 from Sigma because it's got a bit of a point to it so that I can get a bit more control of where I want the shadows to lay down and I will blend out those outer edges a bit further with a, a brush with no additional product once I've got the sufficient colour payoff laid down but is going on super opaque and not a spot of fallout at the moment but as I say I have been pretty careful how I've dipped into it done it very very lightly on the pan just to be sure that it's not going to give me fallout because I've seen a lot of people using this palette so I wasn't going to buy it to start with so I watched lots and lots of videos on it trying to decide whether I wanted it and it wasn't available on Beauty Bay's site when it first came out which stopped me getting it when it came out because it's been out about a year I think and uh, I saw some people really going ham with it and getting fallout everywhere so and I think people worry about shades that have got fallout but I think if you take your time kind of test out what the formula is like and go a bit easy and it's not normally too much of an issue not for me anyway I've got the radioactive palette as well and I intend to at some point do some looks with that but that being a lot more bright and colourful and I normally film on a work day I haven't got around to doing it but hopefully I might get that done this weekend because I've not got too many plans this weekend I'm really really excited for the Amour Eterno collection I spoke about that in my haul video just recently and both palettes but particularly the one that's got the deeper shades the blues and reds oh my god it's so stunning 
like that is a colour story that's just everybody's excited for that I think for good reason they've done an awesome job the packaging the, the shades even the lighter palette and with the oranges and greens is stunning but the one with the reds and, and blues absolutely gorgeous right so I built up quite a strong pigment there in my crease and into sort of a winged out shape in the corner which is one of my favorite shapes to do now i'm going to take a brush with no product it's the sk03 by sosu by suzanne jackson it's from the urban rebel brush collection i love this little brush because it's very flexible it's unlike any other brush that i've got in my collection it can really get into like the edges of a shadow and blend them out without spreading it too far so this brush set is still available on Beauty Bay and I think it's about 26 or so, 27 pounds, but there's some really good brushes in this set, like unique shapes, smaller shapes. There is a big highlighting brush in there, but there are some, mostly it's eye brushes, there's just one highlight brush. And the eye brushes, as I say, are just a bit different. So I think if you struggle to get brushes that are small and detailed and you don't want to spend the earth to get them you don't want to pay sigma prices where you're paying like 12 pounds per brush or whatever these are good like, so there's about seven or eight brushes i think i can't remember in the collection now but yeah they're all good there's a bullet one as well that's like a pointed but soft pencil brush that one's really good this one's a bit more splayed out so good for blending it's really helping me to get that diffused kind of look that I want to the outer edges of that shadow. I wanted to challenge myself not to bring anything else in because I think if I'd have brought in either a translucent powder or a shadow close to my skin tone I could make this blending job slightly easier but I think I just wanted to just stay in the palette and see if I could get a pigmented look from this shade but blend it out as well and I think you definitely can it just takes a bit of time when I started in doing makeup getting a good blend of my shadows was the trickiest thing for me and it still is really I think I'm improving but it's still still not the easiest for me I think the main thing with blending to to bear in mind is that a lot of YouTubers and I do as well cut out a lot of the blending process. So I'm showing you most of the blending process here now. I'm not going to cut much out of this, so you can see how long it has taken me to to get these shades to to look blended and diffused on the edges. It's not a quick process. So it's just a case of taking your time, little flicking motions and a small enough brush if you don't want it to end up at your brows, which I didn't want with this one, otherwise you'll end up taking it too high, unless you want to take it too high because sometimes I quite like that look but today I just wanted to keep it mainly focused in my outer corners be quite diffused but to have that winged out kind of shape. I think we're there. I'm going to do my lower lash line and then I'm going to do my lids last I think. I've got a new pencil to me from Linda Halberg. It's called Whipple Flash. They're one of the flash crayons. So it's a brown with a little bit of iridescence to it. I'm just going to take that in my waterline. Right, and I'm sticking with Sour D's, also that brown shade that we've been working on in the crease. And I'm just going to use my lip pencil by Urban Decay because it's got that kind of shape that helps you get into the lower lash line. Take a small amount of this and just run it along the lower lash. So again I'm going to take the SK03 brush and I'm just going to diffuse under that lower lash so that I can meet that shadow up to the corner 
and make it look nice and diffused and blended with the lace work in the corner that I've already been working on. And that was way easier to blend out, so there wasn't so much of it there. All right, so we've got three goldy shades to choose from, or we could use them all really. So we've got Gravity 06, really super old gold kind of colour. We've got Granddaddy, a bit more greeny in tone, and then even more green is the Black Widow shade. So I think I'm gonna probably work my way along, so outer, middle, inner corner, so that I can try them all out. So I'm gonna apply NYX Glitter Primer. You've seen me do this a lot if you're familiar with my channel, so I'm just going to speed through the footage of that, just so you can see that I've done that, and then we'll start applying the shimmers. So I'm taking Black Widow, I've got a concealer brush to apply this with because it's got a rounded sort of tip, I think that'll help me be precise where I want to put that. And that's going on the outer corner. I'm not super impressed with the foilness of that shade. If foilness is where it is now. It's grungy and green and it's beautiful in tone but I thought it would be a bit more foiled. It is. I'm going to flip the brush over and I'm going to go into Granddaddy next. And that shade seems a lot more foiled and also less crumbly in the pan as well. That is going on like molten metal which is what I was expecting the, the first one to do so it's really pretty. Because they're all in the same colour palette they're blending really really nicely together as well so that's good. And then for the last shade for my inner corner, going in with Gravity 06. And I'm going to wrap that around and onto my lower lash. I'm using a pencil brush to do that because I just think it helps me stay a bit more inside the lines as it were on my lids. Just gives me that extra bit of control in that inner corner. Just going to go in with the Granddaddy shade next to that on my lower lash. Back to our pointed E45 brush, no additional product than I had on it already but I just want to blend the shimmer into the matte now because I don't want this to be a cut crease so we're just going to blend in that crease area. So I'm using sort of circular motions and taking that shimmer up into my crease slightly. I'm just taking my time just to get that blend between the shimmers and the mattes. And again, this is not a quick process, but it's worth the, the time to, if you want to get a shimmery lid, but you still like a blended look. So I know cut creases are not for everyone. I do love a cut crease, but I think people sometimes find it a bit intimidating to do and that they don't think it looks as seamless so I just wanted to show you that you can have a super popping shimmery lid but you can also blend that into a mat and not have it as a cut crease and it still has the same if not more impact if you take your time so that's the eyes right now super happy with how that's come out actually I think it was worth taking the time so I'm not going to put any upper liner on at all because I don't want to cover up all the shimmer that we've laid down. So I'm just going to do a mascara and choose the look for the look and then I'll be right back with you to show you the finished look for this one. Okay guys, so here's the finished look. So it's super green and grungy. Totally my kind of vibes, which I knew I would love the shades in this palette, but I didn't expect them to perform as well as they have, I have to say. That matte surprised me. I thought it would be Fallout City. I nearly did my eyes first. I really thought I would get sprinkles of fallout everywhere because it's such a deep shade. And I went in with a really light hand because of that, but I was able to layer it and keep building so that you can avoid the fallout issue. And I didn't get a single speck of fallout by doing that, which really, really impressed me. So I think if you're one of these people like me that likes to do face makeup first, do that technique, going very, very light handed, just dip to the pan, build and build. 
it helps you to create the shape a lot easier than going in ham with lots of colour anyway but it will definitely stop the fallout and as I said I didn't get any the shimmers look super pretty I mean I'm so so happy with those I think the one in the outer corner isn't as sparkly as perhaps I thought it might be the black widow shade and it's a bit more crumbly in the pan than the other two as well so as i was trying to pick it up on a brush it was sort of crumbling up so that one's not my favorite these two are gorgeous that one in particular is beautiful um, but as i said the matte is really good obviously i've not used the green side of the palette and i'm eager to do so i just wanted to to play in the golds i'm having a bit of a goldy moment at the moment and i just really like golds but i think when i first saw this palette what I first thought was two mattes and six shimmers you're going to be very limited there's no light blending out shades to get a gradient but because melts formula is pretty special you can shear it out and you can almost make a look of a gradient even though you've only got one shade so I'm not sad that I bought it and I think you will only be able to get probably two or maybe three looks out of this but when it does a look so well I'm quite happy to just keep repeating that look if that makes sense I've got lots of other palettes so if I want you know I knew it was only greens and browns in here that's what it's going to do for me but if it does it that well and you don't really have to think you've got your mat that you can put in your crease and blend out and you've got shimmers that match it on both sides so you've got two looks there straight away without thinking about it and that's without mixing and matching some of the shades but I do think the colour range is limited in this to probably, as I say, I can only think of maybe three looks I can get out of it. But but I'm not mad at that because I knew that going in and, as I say, the mattes are more impressive than I expected as well. So I paired this one with an Anastasia Liquid Lip in the shade Stone. It's one of the colours out of the Deep Neutrals uh, bundle that they did last holiday season i'm not sure if that's still available on the site i think it might be there's some really unique tones in that bundle um particularly the deep one and i thought it had the sort of grungy tones without going green i have got green lipsticks but i didn't want to wear green to work so i think this uh kind of captures what i was looking for so yeah i've really enjoyed playing with this hope you've enjoyed seeing me Showing you a bit more of my blending technique. I'm not going to cut everything out, as I say. Uh, I will, as I say, I'm speeding up various bits like where I'm putting on the glitter glue. But I wanted to show you the blending process so that you know if you're struggling with blending that it does take time and, you know, you're not going to blend out an eye look in, in one minute. You know, you're probably talking five or ten minutes of constant back and forth blending to get a seamless look. And you could keep going on forever. I mean, I could have carried on blending far more than, than I've done here but it was just to give you a sense of what's involved anyway and that you can blend a shimmer into a matte with time and patience and that if you don't want to do a cut crease it's not essential to do one to be able to get a popping shimmery lid so hope you enjoyed seeing it as I say I will be playing in the green side very soon and also doing a video on the radioactive palette and as soon as I get the Amora Eterno palettes, you can bet I'm going to be doing videos with those. So I'm so excited for those. I literally can't wait for that release to drop. So let me know, guys, are you excited for those as I am? I, I think there's been a huge buzz in the beauty community for those because they're so unique. But I'd love to know what you guys think of those as well. But anyway, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're not subscribed already and you'd like to be, then I'd love to have you. But I hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.